Welcome to the bad boy pod, talking bad boy bars, make a good girl nuts with the bad boy swag. Having conversations at a bad boy mad, sit down, relax, kick back, have a blast, enjoy the bad boy pod, brought to you by Lady Pod. Ugh, another day in paradise. Listen, living the dream. I am actually early, t- very like earliest TV talk of all time. Please, setting a record, slapping on us. Bachelor in Paradise is good this season. Someone else said that. Who else said that? A genius. Okay, because it's true. Best show on television. Well, Bachelor in P. Just about. All right. Is it just sexy or what's happening? It's sexy. There's drama. No couple oh. is safe. Oh. No couple makes sense. Oh. There are tears. Your faves come back from the entirety of Bachelor Nation. And, uh, you know, guest host David Spade. Oh, yeah. Guest host Lance the Insync Bass. Oh, I was going to say Bass? Bass. <laughs> so, bass? You know, everyone on site there has had a tickler to be there. Oh, certainly. Oh, hello. Certainly a island full of ticklers um, up the nose. I'm Julia Davidovich, and Mm. I would love to be the bachelorette and this is my audition tape actually all of bad boy pod has been my audition tape to be the bachelorette i'm choose Julia me Davidovich. choose me wow i can't take the pressure of that and my name is zoe clar and please bachelor nation choose me to be the next host i think i would kill it i would kill it don't lie i think that i would break the mold i don't think that you've seen anybody like me i'm gonna break the glass ceiling when it comes to hosting the bachelor uh, yeah. They'll be like, she hasn't even been on one episode. What's she doing here? And you'll be like, it doesn't matter. Neither, neither has David Spade. I'm going to be like, neither have you, <laughs> audience member. You're right. You know, like That's you're going to come at me when you haven't even been the host beautiful of The Bachelor. Zoe. Ridiculous people. Let beautiful Zoe host The Bachelor. Let beautiful Zoe host The Bachelor. It's Asuelu's big wish. <laughs> have you had a mm. good week? Mm, yeah. I okay. guess. Okay. Medium. No, yeah. I have a lot of complaints. Okay, certainly. Several bad boys. I guess we should jump right in then to whoever whoever your bad boys on the block. We do be. our bad boys before bad boy updates, right? Yeah. Always. <laughs> Literally for like 130 <laughs> episodes, yeah. Who's potato? Oh my god. Who's potato? Wow, we finally got to the bottom of the fruit flies. <gasps> We've really found some old potatoes. How old? I don't even remember. Guess what did I, they look like? Um, not cute. <laughs> Do you like, have a picture? No. No, this one I could not take a picture of. But like, I didn't realize how bad old potatoes smell. And now I will never be able to unsmell it. <laughs> um, so, wait, where was it though? It was in a drawer that I think we thought was like a oh. cool safe drawer. but it The old to potato be, drawer. You know, absolute uh oversight was she sticky slime was she slimy Be she honest. was a slime aroma for sure yeah it was a real grossy bossy yikes so. wet wet ass potato <laughs> listen i and literally not a single fruit fly sense wow we you really, really found, found the cause we there's really always a cause it's never just it's fly season there's always there's a root People love saying that it's fruit season. fly season, but if I had an online terrible blog that told you how to get rid of your fruit flies, I would start with, no, seriously, go through your entire cabinets and find, find what you have there. Find your something. potato. Find your potato. Find your leek. Find yeah. your scallion. Because I thought scallion. it was a scallion. No, no. It just smelled like one. Just smelled like one. That's rancid. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to say. That's rancid that a potato smelled like a scallion. Yeah, no. Uh, well, no, it didn't smell like a scallion. It smelled more like, like, truly a corpse. <laughs> oh, mama's little corpse. I've mama's actually never corpse. smelled a corpse. Um, neither have I, I guess. But like, you know what? That came pretty close, I think. I think I've smelled like a dead, you know, raccoon. Oh, my name is Zoe Clark. I took, a big, <laughs> I took a big whiff of it. I saw it on the street now. I don't know. I'm just saying things. You're like, okay, just for my scent diary, I need to know what this smells like. But it's like my f- childhood friend, Emma Gabriner, she listens to the podcast, shout out. Um, I think there an animal, perhaps it was a bird or something, died in the map pocket of her car. You know where the map, or her parents' Ooh. car. We were like young. We were probably 10 or 11 at the time. And her car smelled so fucking bad and they thought that it had something had died like in the engine or something and like they took it to the shop and they looked through the engine but it was just in the pocket that was like on the passenger side door that is 
who would suspect? I don't know. Like, how did it get in there? It probably just like, I, I don't know. Who can't speculate, but I know it couldn't get out. Yikes. Also, did yeah. I tell the story about the fish in the driveway? No. So when I went to the East Coast, my mom, we live, I'm going to say like a mile and a half from the Hudson River. Maybe two miles. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. And also, don't kill my mom. Um, <laughs> but she lives about a mile and a half to two miles away from the Hudson River. And she drove up our driveway and there was simply a dead fish, like simply a whole dead, dead, dead fish. fish. Not like it was from the, not like a, you know, beautiful filet of salmon, like a full ass trout, not huge, just like Ooh. slaying on her driveway. Wow. That's so mysterious. Yeah. Did it, did it earth Working itself? theory is like a, a bird dropped it or something, uh, but that's kind of the least exciting. That is the least exciting, but it makes the most sense, I would say. Yeah. It's like, Damn. there's no other reason for it to be there. Listen, case closed. Um, okay. So my bad boy on the block and I didn't even try it. Just the thought of it makes me sick. So I went to a new restaurant in Culver City of all places. Oh yeah. I knew you'd have a complaint. Um, <sighs> not about them, but about the restaurant. <laughs> Um, anyway, it was opening weekend of this restaurant, and they had the most disgusting-looking co- cocktail I've ever seen on the menu. It's a gin and goat cheese. Did I text you this? Oh, yeah, you did. Anyway, my bad boy is just that that exists. Did you? Oh, so you obviously didn't try it. I obviously did not try okay. it. I can't imagine why cheese would ever go in a cocktail, and if it does, why gin would be the alcohol of choice. I just want the goat cheese part. Um, I mean, I do. I had, I mean, and I ordered a pizza and it had goat cheese on it and it was delicious. That's but, perfectly fine. Yeah. I mean, what if you just got the pizza and tried to slip it in your drink? That's sort of what they're doing. I wonder what it looked like. I guess I'll put a picture of it in the slimer. Okay. Because yeah. We'll find we'll it. We'll see if we can find it. We'll find it. I really want to know if the goat cheese is just floating in the middle at the top. The drink is like called curdling. Fromage Noir. Cute. Okay. Who's your next bad boy on the block? Um, oh, my fingy. What? My fingy. I don't even think I told you about it. You didn't tell me about your fingy. You imagine if like an eighth of it was chopped off, you didn't even know. That would be shot. I but now that I, I definitely did clock the band aid at one point, but I just I you just, just didn't, didn't even wanna, care to ask. You're just like, did you judge. bleed out this weekend or what? What happened? <laughs> Finger too hard? I th- <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Um, th- I think I forget what day it was. I guess it was Thursday, classic Thursday or Friday morning. I have to give Fran pills at like early, super early. Once a week? Um, this is just for a month. It's twice a day. Oh. Yeah. Real fun. Uh, love giving pill Fran pocket? specifically pill. No, he, he's too smart for a pill pocket. Ugh, he's genius. Cats, I don't know. Cats. You just shove it in there? You just like, cr- you crank their mouth open and oh, just kind of like try to aim what, it down I their see throat. I this is going. Roxy was a lot kinder. Yeah. Fran is a lot more of a fuss budget. She's, he's feisty. He's a feisty boy. He's a feisty meisty. So that's always a treat. But he didn't injure my finger. He, uh, I went to go get the fucking... I keep like the other half of the pill because it's like half a pill in the morning, half a pill at night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I keep it in the pill cutter. And I open the pill cutter and like a moron at like 6.30 a.m. by myself walking through the home. I like... I don't know how I even put my finger on it, but I sliced my finger. Like I just pressed it down on the top of the pill cutter. Those are sharp. I got a picture. I forgot. Did you cut it? Were you bleeding? Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I broke it on the way to a movie, too. So that was cool. Um, How long did it bleed for? I bled all over myself. Um, It bled. I mean, just a good amount of time. I just sat there with like Like five minutes. Pinky in the air. Yeah. But it just keeps opening because it's in one of those spots. It's like really on the tip. So like every time I put my hand in my purse... Anytime I do anything, I'm really just like fingerly impaired right now on the right hand, but <laughs> fingerly NBD, I think I'll live. Well, um, that's sort of what the dentist said about the chip in, in between my two front teeth that like I can get it filled up, but it's in such a vulnerable spot that it's just going to chip off again. Awesome. Are you comparing my scars to your teeth? Yeah. Because you're kind of right. It's the same thing because it's like you're going to keep busting it open again, but yours will eventually heal and I'm going to be dealing with mine for the rest of my life. Listen, that is your cross to bear, unfortunately. Unfortunate is. And if I don't keep bursting it, I mean, if I do keep bursting it open, it will be there forever. You're right. And that you can try your hardest to make sure that cut never goes away. Oh, I don't want to do that. It no, really hurts every time I bust it open. I definitely it busted it open and used a teeny tiny sanitary napkin to a stop pad? the bleeding. Yeah. 
Beep, beep, beep. What do you mean a teeny tiny? You know the teeny tiny that's like, oh, like for a, us. super thin? Yeah. Just for like to catch your little, your smidge it's, of discharge? It's really for, it's like really for sweat though. It's like. No, it's not. No, I know. But they may as well just call them sweat catchers because it's like, what else, what does this really catch? It catches your, your sweet little discharge. It's <laughs> Julie Davidovich. What does this really catch? My sweet little <laughs> discharge? I remember my mom always had panty liners. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> for that sweaty little discharge. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask her how how her uh, vish sweat is going. I want to know penises. Do yeah. they have a, sw- a sweaty little just like life discharge where they're just like just like there's like a discharge. like this discharge come out of the tip? Yeah. Do you just have discharge penises? Do boys have discharge? I don't know. Huh. I don't know either. Email Diane. Email She's Diane. She's writing a Not pre cum. That's different. Pre cum is different. But this would be like in between cum. Sure. And I guess people rag on men for not knowing enough about women's reproductive yeah, history. And, like, oh, and here I am like. Does your dick leak? Does your dick <laughs> leak during the day? <laughs> I mean, who can say for sure? Who can say for sure? Email Diane, though. Um. Okay. Do you have any other bad boys? I mean, like this is a zippity doo dah through the bad boys. I really don't have that many. Really? I mean, I guess I can throw out that the Hulu app didn't work right for, like, honestly, a while. Really? My Hulu account? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dave Navarro. Looking. No, it's just like their actual app though, and they really they finally gone on. Like, I haven't had any problems with the Hulu app. It just like kept pausing and then just like not playing and then it would just shut down or just like freeze your entire TV and I'm like I don't know that I want Hulu to have this much power over my TV. Our, our TV had this weird glitch where it like seemed like it was like a software bug mm-hmm. um, and it was like glitching and like turning off and on the screen was flickering and stuff and it was on like the Roku homepage and the built-in ad for the Roku homepage was a new TV and I'm sus about it. Oh. I think that it was like some weird like they made the TV flicker so you'd click and buy the new TV because it was advertising right there. And I feel like I've never seen a TV advertised in that spot. It's always like get Paramount Plus or like try our Roku Originals. But this time it was buy a new TV. So you think they deep faked a problem on your TV? Yes. And then tried to make you buy a TV with an ad? That's, that is very possible. <laughs> that's my thought. Jerry did not think so. He was like, they're not that deep. But, I would be deeply. But you know what? You know when like commercials are 30 times as loud sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, why do you do this? They do I it just for a reason. Walked to the kitchen. That should be illegal. Uh, yeah, it should. Uh, but like, I feel like it's to get your attention in certain ways. It's just like by hearing the Home Depot tune. I don't think so. I know. My but favorite I just, song on earth. I mean, if I were trying to run an advert ad for a new TV, I would definitely try to make the old TV look broken. I mean, I I remember there was like a commercial in the 90s or early aughts that had like cockroaches crawling all over the screen. Did you hear about this? Maybe it didn't hit Canada. (laughs) Probably didn't hit Canada. I don't think I've seen it. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the slimer. Did you have this? You might be able to. Mm, I I guess you probably did. It's for an exterminator and it like looked like it was cockroaches crawling all over your screen. Hmm. I don't know. That kind of sounds familiar. Mm, Yummy. (laughs) No, kind of sounds familiar though, but like, I don't know. Not familiar enough for me. I don't okay. remember any names about it. No, I don't remember the name, but I remember it being a thing. And people are like, blah, it's... Uh, there are bugs in my TV. No, Get what is it out. called when they like subliminal messaging? Oh, really? Remember the heyday of subliminal messaging? God, listen, take me back to that. I know, and they were like... so much worse. They're secretly flashing words like boner on the screen at all times. Let them. <laughs> I guess bad boy update Laura Prepon. Oh, yeah, bad boy Prepon? update Laura Prepon. Prepon. Great Prepon. Prepon. Grey Poupon? Grey Poupon? Uh, yeah, she's out of Scientology. Ex-Scientologist, baby. I wonder if she's going to spill the beans. Oh, God, it would be wonderful to see. I mean, what beans... What beans would she even have to spill, to be honest? Enough, because I'm sure the handling of Danny... Wow, gross. Oh. The handling of Danny... Disgusting, but yeah. Um... Probably, I don't You're know. You're right. She maybe that's why she ultimately is out because of the handling of Danny. She probably had enough pressure from people outside of Scientology that were her friends or something, being like, "Are you seriously still in this shit or something?" Yeah, there had to be something. Like there have been so many. There have been upwards of seventy-five investigative. Uh, podcasts about Scientology and you're oh, still in it and you're still literally in it and like I'm not going to say I don't blame Scientologists for being in Scientology 
sure. um, when it comes to celebrities. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> it's like they, they treat them differently. Differently, they do. They really coddle them in a way. I, but I don't. I, I don't feel bad for you. No. I just. I feel like you know. I feel glad when you wake up. Yeah, I'm glad Laura woke up. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Honestly, a huge congrats for waking up. Because, like, honestly. Bonjour to Laura. Um, okay, so there's a quick trial talk update with R. Kelly. I'm not going to go into details, blah, 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 because I don't feel like putting the disclaimer in front of this one just for a quick R. Kelly update. You're right. Um, so up until this point during in his trial, six victims have testified, including um, a male victim. Oh. And the minister who wed R. Kelly and Aaliyah also testified. Jeez. Um, so kind of more of the same story, the herpes thing. I think the reason they like kept bringing up the herpes thing in the beginning is because more victims that have testified have said that they were infected with herpes. So I guess that is a like a thread that kind of connects them back to it. Yeah. Something that they can prove in some way. That makes sense. Um, one woman testified that he assaulted her like within the week that he married Aaliyah. So, so huge fuck you to R. Kelly as always. What did the um the guy that wed? He said that he didn't know who R. Kelly and Aaliyah were. <laughs> that they offered to pay him fifty dollars, but he didn't take it. Um, and that they asked him to sign like some confidentiality thing, but he didn't sign it. But he didn't like know who they were. I think. I mean, sh- she had a fake ID, so, so he weird. just did it. So is he lying? No, but he had. This is the first time he's ever testified. Like no one has ever contacted him for. Did they always know who he was? Like the state, just like uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. So wild, so gross. Um. Yeah. Very disgusting. So that's the quick R. Kelly update. As we said last week, uh, got all that info from BuzzFeed reporting. Oh yeah. So awesome. Shout out to you. Should we move on to our bad boy of the week? Yeah. Um. Great. I guess we'll get into it, but I'm going to start by saying it's a girl blo- girl boss, your uh, blood. Mm, yeah, I would say. Yeah. A real take your blood, your gal. Take, take your take blood, your, your gal. Mm-hmm. It's Theranos slash Elizabeth Holmes. We're going to figure out really how we're going to frame it in the epi tight tight, um, which is the episode title, of course. Mm hmm. For reasons we'll get it due. Anyway, guess her net worth. Oh, God. Damn. Okay. Like 20 million? It is currently zero dollars. Wow. Yep. And in 2015, she was worth 4.5 billion. Oh, my God. So that's a real How the Mighty have That's fallen. a drainorama. It's such a drainorama. Um, so the Theranos story is really a Silicon Valley tragedy when you think about it Mm -hmm. um what do you think about doing like a black turtleneck for the tz2s and then everyone's gonna think it's steve jobs but then it's not i mean i feel like people will definitely know it's because she's there there because she's going to try try yeah and like that is her i mean also i want to talk about that too what do you think about having about like her a, voice? Not about her voice. I mean, we could. T- do you think her voice is fake? Yes. You really think she puts it on? I do think she puts it on, but a, I feel like it's for. I, I don't know why she does it, but I feel like it's for men to take her more seriously. As a deep voice, a little bit voiced woman, yeah. like men do not take me. No, more they seriously. don't take me seriously. I cannot tell you how much less that happens anyway. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I don't. I do think it's weird because there have been times where she's been caught on camera using her actual voice. Actual voice. Yeah. I mean, it's so weird. Yeah, I don't know. Eh, what do you think about having a um? What's the word I'm thinking of? Uniform. Yes. Oh. Because that is her uniform. It is her black uniform. Black um, I think that if you're basing your uniform off of Steve Jobs, it's probably not good. Okay, but what would your uniform be? A uniform in general? Oh, I mean, a t-shirt and jeans. I t-shirt, know that's jeans, boring. Crocs? 
Definitely Crocs. If you could wear that every day, you'd just be so happy. If the thing is, like, if I have to walk around, I can't wear Crocs because I have weak ankles. Weak ankles, Magoo. But just within, you know, let's say I was the CEO of Theranos, Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't a lying fraudster. I really took it seriously. And I would have a pair of office Crocs so that like, you know, Mm -hmm. basically when I'm not, when I have to walk around, I'll I'll have my sneaks. But when I want to just chill and scream at people in the office, I'll pop, I'll throw my Crocs on, baby. Yeah, I guess I'm seeing a look into what the Zoe high powered life would be like. Mm -hmm. It sounds really great. What would your would just, uniform be? Honestly, really simple. Probably very similar. At yeah. this point, shorts. Yeah, like, you it's love so shorts. Hot here. So you it's going to be shorts. some kind of high waisted short getup. Yeah, some kind of shirt that has you know, you know, maybe a tuck in, maybe not. Oh, but it'll, you know, it'll be there. A tuckerama, a tuckerama f- Carlson. Fucking sneakers, and that's it. I love fucking sneakers. I love fucking sneakers. But you wear Chucks. It would be Chucks. It would be Chucks. A real Ellen DeGeneres. Julie doesn't know. Feels like I'm just whatever, whatever I feel like. (laughs) I love my new balances. I don't think they're Nazi shoes. You're (laughs) here. I don't think they're Nazi shoes. Stop DMing me about it. (laughs) I don't think they come from Nazis. They don't. No. They said fuck the Nazis, New Balance. Did they do that now? Is that what's happening? They did it right after they were like... They did it right after. They did it right away. <laughs> New Balance was, I swear, quick on the apology. Okay. Well, good for them. Listen, they do have comfortable shoes, I will They have say. a very practical shoe. And I can't believe I threw away my pair of New Balances after that happened. I can. Okay. So let's talk about Theranos. Elizabeth Holmes, the CEO, founder of Theranos dropped out of Stanford at age 19 to start this company that she said was going to revolutionize medicine and democratize medicine. And it was a blood testing machine that could use a pinprick to detect a bunch of fucking conditions that usually we'd have to go to like quest diagnostic, quest diagnostics and get that shit pulled out of you and by the tubes worth tubes, baby. Um, I used to really take a lot Oh, yeah. How are your veins? Really, they were really popping today. I was warm. When you go know. to the, when you go get your blood drawn, are they like, oh, yeah, good veins? No one ever compliments my veins, but they're there. I I really noticed them today. They're never like poking around and they're looking, searching. I've mission. never had them search, but every time someone tells me that, I'm like, oh, yeah, they really had to search for mine. I was just like, don't tell me this. It's like, why are you bragging about, hear about your that veins shit? being hard to find? Yikes. What about when they tie the rubber band around your arm i hate yummy, that yummy i don't know if i've gotten that maybe i have oh yeah i definitely have the blood really just pours out oh yeah and but then when it's like at the tail end and they undo the rubber band ugh, the release is so nice wow my name is zoe clark and the release is so <laughs> nice you can quote me on that it's true. so before she dropped out of stanford she did talk to one of her professors about this idea and they were like yeah there's no way that will ever work um so that's some background. Okay. <laughs> so by 2015, she had raised more than $400 million and Theranos was valued at $9 billion. And her her donations were through Richie Bobichis like the Waltons, the Walmarts, of, aka Wahlburgers of the world, um, Betsy DeVos's big fam. And also the the company kind of went public, not in terms of like, not like they had an IPO. That's not what I mean. They went public with the idea. Like it was sort of like a behind the scenes sort of thing. And then when they had this um, partnership with Walgreens where they got like $100 million to put to like have Theranos quote unquote technology in all of the Walgreens stores, that's when people started looking into it. Wow. Um, I mean, like, I I forgot how much it looked like a jewel pod. It like looked, what she was claiming. Had, it looked exactly like a jewel pod. And it seems impossible because it is. Because it is. Yeah. I mean, I do believe that probably in time. We'll definitely put it on the Slimer, by the way. Oh, definitely. A little blood jewel pod. It's Maybe that's where they got the idea or vice versa. Pods. I think so. You know what? I think I was still like a traditional smoker bef- when I saw that doc because I would have definitely have made the connection had I... Had I mean, been a jewel had jewel pods then. really taken off around then? I don't think. What was it like? Twenty seventeen, sixteen? Yeah. No. No. Okay. So basically, right after this partnership with Walgreens was announced, the Wall Street Journal started doing some investigative reporting, and I couldn't read the article because it's behind a paywall. 
So the uh, reporter who broke the story was named John Carreyrou. Car- John Carreyrou. And he's a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. And he wrote this article in 2015 about how basically Theranos has sold this idea that they're a company that can do... Um, to offers more than 240 tests mm-hmm. that range from detecting cholesterol to cancer with just the finger prick. Um, and by the time he wrote this article in 2015, it was proven that it can only do a small fraction of the tests that they claim they can do, and they were for the most part inaccurate. Not only that, but when they got pa- blood from patients, because they were basically testing the quote unquote testing the technology on real patients so they could prove to their investors that it's effective and it worked Mm -hmm. and even our current president Joe Biden went to the Theranos lab and had his blood tested and mm -hmm. and through this investigative reporting it came out that they weren't actually testing that blood on the Theranos machine which which they called the Edison but they were testing it on traditional lab third party machines that um they were just testing it on third-party machines that already exist that, like, Quest Diagnostics would use or something like that. So, but they still weren't getting accurate readings because it just wasn't enough blood? Or I in guess. some cases that... Because I heard accounts that, like, some people were saying, they told me it was this much blood, but they actually took this much blood. That was another thing, was that they there was a, something on their website that said, like, we can t- test all of these things with just a pinprick. And then after they found out they were being investigated, that sentence was removed from the website. (laughs) So I'm not entirely sure what they were saying. If they were like, we're testing new technology, so we need to like have a larger amount as like a sample to compare it against. I don't know. Um, And they also weren't reporting the results of the actual Theranos device to like the SEC or whatever. I just... Not that I think the medical industry, and I obviously it's tainted by insurance and bullshit like that here, but like, not that I am so trustful of the FDA or the medical industry or the drug companies yeah. or anyone, but like, I'm also never going to trust some person that like literally makes a blood jewel. <laughs> Like <laughs> she did make a blood jewel. I mean, it's she- just like she. It's weird the like Silicon Valley ness of this company when it's supposed to be like a medical company. But people are so trusting of that now I too. Know. Where it's just like, oh, like remember the case where we had so many false. What was it? It was false negatives here in For LA COVID? with the yeah the COVID ca- uh, t- the test that we were buying, the pre ticklers. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. the spit tests. Yeah. They were just some dude's startup company. For, I think he was like Australian or something. Right. And he just he like, like some 25-year-old the... entrepreneur that had some weird testing. So weird. So like, I don't know. A lot of people believe those too. Yeah. It's just like a, a very vulnerable time. So, you know. And I'm not... I mean, it's not good that she and her... uh ex-boyfriend slash also president of the company whose name was whose name is Sonny Balwani and he's also involved in like the criminal case and the civil cases that were brought against Theranos um wait I had such an interesting good point that I'm sure would have changed everyone's opinion on (laughs) everything but I'm sure I'll get it back I'm sure it was genius um okay so Basically, once that article came out from the Wall Street Journal, everything came crashing down. Um, There was additional reporting that Sonny, who was the president slash ex-boyfriend of Elizabeth Holmes. But okay, so we'll get into the current trial in a second. But apparently, as a boss, Sonny was the worst. He would like verbally accost his employees he fired people all the time. Mm-hmm. He would like he tracked how long employees worked and would and yelled <laughs> at one guy for working an eight hour day. That's like abusively micromanaging everyone. Exactly. It can't be good. It and he good was for... constantly paranoid that there were spies within the company. I, which is that's like just not a good guilty mix. conscience for real. Um and apparently he was also he di- he also didn't really know anything about tech or medicine 
And the engineers and people in the lab realized that he would start like using words that sounded good over and over and over again to appear more knowledgeable. And so there was at one point where the developers did some sort of presentation using a fake word and sort of pranked him into using this word. And he used it for like years in presentations to developers and other investors and stuff. That is deeply Um, embarrassing. I know. Wow. Wow. But also good prank. That is a really solid prank. I'm sure, wow, I'm medical sure science everyone was prank. tiki-keying on their secret WhatsApp because they, if everything else was being tracked. You're pro- yeah, you're right. Man, yeah. he tracked every slack in that building. Oh, not a slack left unchecked. He probably had their own like communications, like yeah. Theranos comm. Oh, they def- yeah, they definitely did. Their comm. Their comm. Wow, they're broke now. That's wild. Yeah, they're very broke. Um, okay, so when this article came out, it was in 2015... In 2016, um, Theranos failed an inspection of their lab, which found irregularities between tests, between employees, between like the technology, um, and eventually barred Elizabeth Holmes on owning and operating a lab for two years. And Sonny Balwani also got the same, um, the same ban. And now, currently, Elizabeth Holmes' criminal case is going on. It started on August 31st. And they picked their jury, seven men and five women. And both Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani are being charged with nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. And there are two schemes, they call it. One was to defraud investors and the other one was to defraud patients. Um, so, yeah, they're saying the trial could go on for 13 weeks. Jeez Louise. And... So it came out that Elizabeth Holmes's primary defense in the trial is saying that Sonny um, was dominating her and physically and sexually abusive um, and that he controlled what she wore, how often she slept, who she could speak to. Um, and so that is the that is what has been reported is going to be her defense is that like she was mentally mm-hmm. incapable of frauding. Uh, defrauding these people because she was under control um, of Sonny. They met when she was 18 and he was 37 and he was married. That's so yikes. Yeah. So, I mean, based on what we know about Sonny's boss behavior, um, I mean, nothing would surprise me. Nothing would surprise me. I don't think she's lying. I don't know why she would make that up. I don't know. I don't know. I mean... just. It wouldn't, I, you know, and it's, you know, that, that is a very good defense. It is. Because it's like, it will be interesting that it's seven men in the jury and whether or not they are even going to believe the story, you know, that's sort of, I bet when they were doing jury selection, the defense knew that their primary argument was going to be that she was like abused. And I wonder how the men in the jury Versus the women are going to react to that. Yeah. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? It does. I mean, there's definitely going to be a bias there. Yeah. I'm sure. I, yeah. Just what society tells us. It's sad. Um, I definitely hate that it happened to her, but it's seeming more and more like a possibility that she was groomed if she met him when she was 18. I know. That was... You can be the smartest person on earth. You can have all the gosh darn education in your asshole. Yeah. And still be groomed. It doesn't matter who you are. Right, right. 18 is young. And he was 37 and married. It's, it seems very possible. It does. Um. So, you know, he quit and she got remarried and has a kid. And she had the kid in July. This July? Yeah. Wow. So the timing is interesting. Oh, um, man, what a mess. And Sonny's, Sonny's trial is not until next year. That is so wild. But something I saw, I was watching like YouTube news clips and they said... This being the defense increases the chance that they're that Elizabeth is going to go on the stand. Increases? Yes. That will be very interesting. So that, like, I guess traditionally isn't what white collar crime criminals do. They rarely take their stand at the. They rarely take the stand at their own trial. You think she would want to? I don't know. I mean, because it's also entirely possible that she was abused, but also defrauded people. I mean... So it's going to be like their job to say the abuse is the thing that caused her to do this. Or she was like unable to make her own 
decisions because of the abuse. I guess that's what they're going to have to prove. What a shit And the show. abuse that it happened. I mean, wow. It, it, you know, the only thing that we know for certain, I guess, is that lawyers are going to get rich off it. But like, <laughs> they're definitely going to get rich off also, it. Also, Sunny's pretty bad. I can Sunny, guarantee I think, that. But I like, think Sunny's bad. Whether or not she wittingly was committing fraud. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling that. I don't know. I don't know. But now just, I don't know because like I don't all know. of this, it's like, I, I don't know. Eh. Yeah. That's really tough. I don't know if she was frauding. I'm glad I'm not on the jury. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I was going to ask you, would you rather be on this or free Britney? But it's like, come on. Free Britney. That's like. This, I mean, that's I obvious. think like before I heard that this would be the defense, I probably would have chosen this one because it's like, oh, white collar crime. It's sort of like flashy but not like i mean you definitely want to see the person go down for defrauding people like yeah i hate it like I, that, I, that's one I of the said, worst it's kind. not like i'm upset at her for you know fucking over betsy devos's family's investment oh, it's yeah. that like that shit i don't care about yeah that's like whatever <laughs> it's just like people who have you know literal problems yeah health pe- problems like, with that legitimately think they're getting care anyone who you know anyone right now who is an anti-vaxxer and they have just been believing stuff that they read i'm not saying i feel bad for anti-vaxxers it's just the people out there that just get the weirdest information the ones that you do feel bad for yeah it's just like, I don't know who you're trusting. But also when there's like, when someone's trying to offer you some kind of solution mm-hmm. and it is a fraud, yeah. then obviously that's a nightmare. So like... It is like she had such you? high power people on the board of Theranos though. Like Henry Kissinger was on the board. <sighs> you know, like big, big money shot. McGee's were on the board. She fundraised for Hillary, baby. Like... She was in the political sphere. I rewatched most of it, uh, yeah. the documentary, which I guess we'll put on the slammer. Sure. If you haven't seen it yet, I mean, it's been up there for years. Um, I was trying to like look to see, like knowing what I know now, if like you can see anything. Oh, but oh, just with like, Sunny, with any of them, you're just yeah. kind of like, I still can't. I yeah. really can't tell anything. Like a woman under control. I don't know. Yeah, I can't see it. I can't see anything. It is. It will be interesting to see. It will be interesting to see. I wonder if they'll call Sunny to testify at her trial. They're not married, right? No. Okay. Uh, and they never were. Not that it matters. Yeah. God. I mean, just like if you didn't know anything about the history. Yeah. Also, like, it's so sus that he was already married when they met. Come on. I know, and that she was so young. And she was so young. It's well, like, it's a 13-week trial, so we'll have 13 weeks of trial talk updates. I guess so. Um, but we I don't think we can flat out call her a bad boy. That's what That was our big debate, is I, whether or not we wanted to call this episode Elizabeth Holmes. I think or it's more Theranos. the Theranos brand. Yeah, it's the Theranos brand. Because we'll undeniably, Sonny is a bad boy. We can say that. <laughs> we'll say Sonny is definitely a bad boy, and... We'll see what the jury says about Elizabeth Holmes, and then we will also make our own judgment because people are usually wrong. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to be so... F- this and is- if she's found guilty, she could be sentenced up to 20 years, and then there's like a bunch of fines that she'd have to pay back. I mean, if anyone's going to come out on top of this one, I'd, <laughs> I'd so much prefer it to be her. That... I agree with. Yeah. Um, so let's shut the door on Theranos and we'll give updates, baby. Why do you I want to go for problem. that pink dot so badly? Um, I don't think Mark McGrath invested in Theranos. Oh, I don't think so either. But like, if he was at Walgreens and he saw that he could get his like, you know, perfect blood injected into a weird little jewel, smokable yeah. jewel, yeah. he'd do it. He'd do it. I and think then if he'd he try to approach, smoke it. Yeah, he'd definitely smoke his own blood. Oh, absolutely. My name is Mark McGrath and I would smoke my own blood. I mean, undeniable Mark McGrathism. Who are your good boys this week? Do you have any? Oh, I got five passion fruits with my weed ordered this week. They are going too far. 
<laughs> They're going too they far. They are going too far. Um, passion fruits? Yes. My weed lady was like, she was like, how much do you like passion fruits? And I was like, I like them. And she was like, but how much? And I was like, I like them like, the like regular five amount. five out of ten. <laughs> I said a regular amount. I'm not in love with them. Um, and she was like, I have four passion fruit uh, bushies in my yard. And I, I have so many of them. They're, and they're so cool. And their plants are so funky. But we'll they're put goopy, in the goopy, goopy, goopy. They're goopy boopies. They're goopy boopies. Do they you... really look like they're from another earth. They look like alien jizz. Curd? Ooh, that's a good idea. You Ooh, can put we're it in your make pie. A pie. Yeah, shit. Passion fruit cream bum, pie. Bum, bum, bum. Where's my BBBOC? Oh, I heard that's coming back, by the way. Oh, yeah, early TV talk. It so is. It so is. I'm BBBO excited says? for it. I need a little bum, 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 bum in my life right now. They gave us the worst um, trailer I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I didn't watch the trailer. It was like nothing. It was just like, dun, 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 dun. Not even. It was like a more stressful <laughs> tune. But, well, um, also, The Circle comes back this week. Oh, my God. Shannon told me. Shout out Sharon. Uh, Sharon. Shout out to Shout Sharon. Out Sha- <laughs> Shout out to Shannon. I have to put... Di- she sent me a Lego Diane, and I simply must put her in the Slimer. Okay. I keep forgetting to. Let's do it. Um, where the fuck is GBB of Sus? Just, just oh, ask You're him. really searching for I'm it. I'm pissed. There's no way I got rid of it. Nah, it's in there somewhere. It's probably a picture of Paul Hollywood. You're right. Uh, Listen, we're going to be is. back in the tent very soon. I cannot wait to be back in the tent. It's like the most important TV talk. Um, I don't think I have any good boys this week. I would say this week has been terrible. A mediocre boker. A mediocre boker at best. At best. Um, I feel like it's been so mediocre. I have nothing even to say. So let's move on to TV talk. Al Roker. Oh, a mediocre Al Roker. I love that. Imagine TV I hit talk. The lady parts one again. I would throw this <laughs> mic out the, the window. Episode. Um, JK, JK. You're absolutely despy to end it. Um, what are your TV talks this week? <laughs> huh? What did I watch this week? I guess I'm still watching Nine Perfect Strangers. <sighs> it's not amazing, but that was my big Hulu complaint. The app just kept shutting it down. I was like, oh. it's going to take me four hours to they watch. They really this. don't want you to watch that fucking show. And but they did them. fix the app, so thank you, Hulu. Apparently, Good point. there's a sci-fi element. Uh, yeah. Also, they're just on shrooms. Right, they're tripping. Yeah. They're dr- being drugged. I mean, if you're on shrooms, it kind of feels like some kind of sci-fi element to your life, I guess. I guess. But what Name if the of... sci-fi element is the truth? Oh, listen, the hardest part. Bad boy. Oh, my God. Um, Two people are not going to be on the next episode of Law & Order SVU. What? Detective Cat, the bisexual. <laughs> okay. And you know who I'm talking about? Yes. And... um. I don't even remember what his thing was, but Barnes, the like, uh, the guy who's in charge of the unit. Yeah. They're both going to be out. Why though? I don't know. They're anti-vaxxers. I don't think they're anti-vaxxers. That's my new answer for everything. I mean, maybe they are. Kat, the woman who played Kat wrote a thing on her Instagram that was like, it wasn't my choice. The decision was made above my pay grade, but thank you for allowing me to be part of this show or something like that. So I don't know. Oh my, I wonder what that's all about. I do. It's a real Spicy? Oh, Spicy yeah. meatball. Meatballs a, every Sunday? Oh, uh, meatballs every oh Sunday. Oh my God, I ate meatballs last night. Oh, you know meatballs what? Meatballs every Sunday. I had an eggplant parmesan hero last night <gasps> and it was good. Oh my God, that's close to a meatball. It's close to a meatball. It's like a vegetarian meatball. It's a very meaty vegetable, I will say. One of the meatiest. Also, bad boy today, it was heating up a veggie burger. <laughs> And Set your I dropped fire. it on the ground and oh. it splooshed all over the joint. Because it was a thick, crummy one. What brand? Zoe Clark Original. Oh my God. Yep. Zoe Clark Bar. Zoe Clark Bar. It, Bar. it was mushrooms and beans and carrots okay. and onion. Tasty. It was good. That's a good um, one. Yeah, it's a good boy. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a TV talk. Go on. Jerry and I have started watching the show. It's a British cop show. Called Line of Duty. Oh my god, my mom watches. It's really good. Wait, this is an old show though. It's still on. Sure. It started in 2012. Okay, yes. So this is yeah, the one. Your mom definitely watches Every it. time my mom visits, every time I see her at Christmas, anytime I'm in the same room as my mom, she'll be like mentioning the next time she needs to watch that show or she fell asleep watching it and she uh-huh. needs to catch up or I mean, like, mommy, like, where daughter. can I watch, uh, can I log into Amazon and watch it on there? Well, How it's on Hulu. Yes. We watched, we like 
busted through the first season. We okay. finished it in like, I mean, it's British, so there are only five episodes in the first season. You know oh, how they do. I love British television. I they know. don't make everyone look so hot. They're just like, here's some natural British people. Yeah. We're these not going to make them look like literally look dewy, glowy goddesses. They're just going to look like humans. And they do. Yeah. Um, I really love it. It was, it gave me the drama. It gave me the, you know, it's not, it's better. It's like, more prestige than a law and order you get to hear all the fun british accents in the oh, bag yeah, there's an so irish many. man in there too oh, love it when an irish person pops in yeah he popped in he's one of my fave characters so i love, I love it accent. i've also watched a lot of tv this week so i, I guess watched, i have to watch line of duty now i watched q force oh i want to try that is it fun it's funny. Okay. I mean, it has a 3.7. It on... takes me a sec. It's a cartoon, right? Yeah. It takes me a sec to get into a cartoon. It's funny. like lots and lots of jokes. Lots. Very, very funny. Okay. You but know? like very funny, not like too many jokes where it's like, are we just quipping about? Because I know like Big Mouth has a lot of jokes. It's a bit it. of a quipping about. Okay. Fine. Do you know the premise of the show? Yeah. It's about gay spies. It's great. Um, And it's like, a ver- it's very gay. Perfect. Um, and I mean, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed watching it. It is, you know, I don't think it's going to win win any awards, but I think it's pretty funny and I loved it. Is it edgy? Yeah. That'll be fun. Um, I'm interested in a new fun comedy. It's fun. It's 10 episodes. You'll breeze right through it. I like a, like, it's like hit or miss. There's so many weird little new cartoons they've been coming in, like new, whatever, animated series that are sure. s- just like I know they're popping up left and right they really are and I think it's quarantine and the quality has just been not great it is quarantine did you watch the Bob Ross doc not yet I'm sorry fine well we're never speaking again (sighs) I'll cry soon okay yeah you have to cry soon um I think those are all my TV talks this week of course uh the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars has been crowned you can tell me Kylie Sonique Love okay who is deserving of the crown. Honestly, so I'm happy with it. Um, I will hopefully watch it. This is the one that's only available on Paramount. PP. PP. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, uh, to her. Okay. And we can post a picture of her in Wilmer Sliderama looking hot because she's incredibly hot. What season is she from originally? Two. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I definitely never saw her first. No. I didn't like when I watched Drag Race. I think I started at six or seven and just went. I never really watched the first one to five. I was like, do I have to go this far back? No, you don't. And I, didn't. I mean, actually, season four and five are really good. Okay. Then maybe I'll go to four and five, but I yeah. probably won't if I'm not even watching All Stars now. Yeah, probably not. But those are on Hulu, so it's easy. Well, if you want. That's what you say if you don't watch the 90 Day Fiance You're right. universe Your so is, closely. Your time is so monopolized by it. How's it really Naked is. and Afraid of Love? Oh, it's fantastic. I just remember there's a new episode tonight. Oh, exciting. Can't wait to watch it. Um, are you? Is Happy there a Sunday couple night. you're rooting for that we should put in Wilmer? No, because they're like, they still haven't coupled up yet. They're still really oh. um, They're in the smooch phase? Because like, the couples meant more couples, so they're kind right. of coming together. So right. now it's just an, a free-for-all. Are they all making out? I've seen like one make out. One couple, there's like one kind of coupling up a bit, and they didn't start together either. So like, Ooh. maybe they'll stay... That's but like, spicy. I like how that. How fucked is it that you have to be naked and afraid? Like, you and literally have love. to end in love. It's just like exhausting. That's too many emotions. Imagine at once. trying to fall in love while hungry. I'm so mad. Ugh, you're so, so mad. right. I'd be so pissed and hot. Or like, li- here's the thing they also build huts for them. So they're not really doing all oh, the Oh, really? Af- afraiding out. Yeah. They build them huts. Because they, they need them to stay longer than like normally. True. And I think they must give them bug spray or something because these butts are not covered in bites yet. Oh, not yet. Not yet. They will be. But it's still been like... The booties are going to get bit. I think I think not. I feel like they're getting special treatment. But that's just Julia's I mean, big suspicion. I mean, probably because I feel like <sighs> you want you just want people to stay out there longer than the normal nudie and a fruity, I think. Mm-hmm. You're probably right. They definitely get condoms. They're probably getting like dental dams and shit too. I'm sure they're chock full of dental dams. And like actual, they're not like, they don't have to weave their own condoms. They're getting real condoms. Oh yeah. yeah. Some of them are actually weaving their own clothing. It's like, don't you want to be naked in front of your fucking new soulmate? Right. You don't want to, like you just want to be afraid in clothes. (laughs) Where's the TV show in that? Clothed and terrified. Clothed and terrified. With my new betrothed. Discovery Plus. Discovery Plus. Oh, perfect channel. So yeah, and there's also the um, 
The uh, what's it called? The other way. The other way, which is still not so great. Yeah. Um, Samit and Jenny are really fighting. Of course, they're still a thing. They're still a thing. Wow. She's always just like, I'm going to leave you, and it's like, just fucking leave the guy. She still has not married him. Like he has, has not married she, her. Has she met his parents? Oh yeah, several times. They keep yelling at each other. That's what I like to hear. The perfect relationship. Perfect relationship. Um. Okay, so let's do the blurberaba. You know, climate change. Talk about a transition. That was yeah. horrible. Wow, perfect Basically, transition. Basically, this week has been bad. Uh, Texas passed their extremely restrictive abortion law, and that was horrible. Um, the entire East Coast was underwater and flooded, and that was bad. Um, so who are we to just breeze on by and talk about Theranos and not try to be better people? It's true. You know? I mean, it's uh, sure, obviously, our problem seems so much smaller and they are. And they are. They way are. Way smaller. Way smaller. It's like I got a bug bite today and not like my house was pulled away in the midst of a hurricane and I have nothing now. Yeah. I mean, it's simply not fair. It's It sucks that people can't just live their normal lives in a place that they should be able to live. Yeah. Governments, you know, obviously being as restrictive as they've historically been during these times. And, you know, obviously I'm not the expert on it, but yeah. it is so fucking sad that people just can't live in the place they want to live and right you know they grew up and they should be able to yeah without literal fear you know and it's you can like see the places that are more impacted by the like climate change devastation that's everywhere are the places that don't have the money for better drain systems better more robust infrastructure so Again, just like everything in this fucking country slash world, the people who are being the most displaced and negatively impacted by these things are those with the least amount of resources. Duh, classic. It's Same not- with abortion in Texas. Like, it's horribly restrictive on everyone, but like poor women, trans people, those are the people who are going to really not be able to get access to safe abortions because we have learned over and over again that. It's not even going to prevent abortions from happening. It's just going to prevent safe legal abortions from happening. Yeah. And we can share all we want about the closest abortion centers outside of Texas. Yeah. Um, But the fact of the matter is not everyone has the luxury to drop what they're doing and leave. No. Which is the same about hurricanes, which is the same about everything. And, you know, it's not up to residents of their own country to make themselves feel safer when they just should be allowed a basic human right to live. Because that is... This is like complete human rights violation all of it across the board and it's like other states are gonna have um other states are gonna try to make laws like texas we already have seen it happening so yeah we'll we'll obviously have links um yeah but we want to highlight one organization that is working in louisiana let me find the link a doodle dandy there's still people without power hot water and i think people like you know especially during covid people having to put themselves in like a different place where they can't plan for things or things keep getting canceled on them or they can't, you know, literally plan two days ahead anymore. Yeah. Just like that on top of displacement, I couldn't even imagine. So um, we're going to put a link in the Wilmer Sliderama and in our bio for this GoFundMe. And I'll just read a blurbarama from it. Um, This is what the person who started the the blow fund me. This is what the person who started the the GoFundMe said. I've decided to create a GoFundMe specifically for the small towns of Southeast Louisiana that are predominantly black and do not have large voices at, do not have a large voice as New Orleans. These small towns receive the worst part of the storm and have more damage than New Orleans and have far less resources. Most of the homeowners are older individuals that may have not had access to the various resources provided online or outside of the town. Uh, The money raised will go directly to individuals and families in need in the river parishes and surrounding areas that are predominantly black and suffered horrendous damage. (sighs) Yeah, you know, we'll put a link to that and whatever other horrific climate change related natural disasters happen between now and Thursday. Yeah. Because it is a meatballs every Sunday. So we'll see. It is really a meatballs every Sunday. Every goddamn day. Every fucking goddamn Sunday, it's meatballs. Yeah. I mean, again, it like... (laughs) <laughs> meatballs every Sunday. I can't believe 
How Leftovers, it seems. Did you ever watch Leftovers? No. Oh, my God. The Leftovers. Anyway, TV talk, very late and early TV talk for yeah. next week. The Leftovers. Okay. Yeah. That's all it remind me of. I... It's it's a scary place to be right now. If you're in California, vote no on the recall. This will probably be the last week we can fucking say that. Oh, God. We don't want Please. an anti-vax, COVID-denying sack of shit to be our governor. We'll take the sack of shit we have. Thank you very much. We'll take our current sack of shit. Remember, fire season's coming up. It's it coming. could be very terrible. It With could be terrible. Else, uh, it could you know, be even basically worse. Basically, wherever, even you, sure, are, wherever you are in the worse. country... Uh, make sure you're ready for an earthquake, a flood, a fire, whatever. Listen to the Big One podcast if you're in L.A. I just feel like, or in California at all. Oh, is that a podcast? I've never heard of. Oh yeah, it's a big, it's a big old pod, and it tells it'll freak you out. Really hardcore about getting ready for the hurricane and what you need to do. Getting ready for the big one. The hurricane? You mean no, the, the earthquake. earthquake? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I really climate change bumble up. Anyway, um, so. That brings us to the end of the Potterama. Oh, yeah. Everyone's favorite time. Everyone's favorite time. Subscribe. I literally never say that. Rate and review the pod on Apple Podcasts. Five-star review. Screenshot that hoe. Send it to Diane. She'll send you a pin. She'll send you a note. And she'll have no regrets doing it. No regrets. Email she'll Diane. write your address proudly. Proudly. Email Diane at badboypod.com. Your bad boys on the block. Your good boys. Anything you want to disclose emotionally. Um, shop at badboypod.com for a shirt. Follow us everywhere at Bad Boy Podcast if you want. Uh, give money if you can. Share resources, information if you can't. And, um, you know, stay awake until you're tired. <laughs> That's the Zoe promise, and that happens at is. 10... 15 p.m. for her every night. Oh, yeah. Brought to you by Lady Parts.